Do you want to do an intro? You want to do an outro? Did we have kind of an intro? I think we kind of did have an intro okay. for one of them. What we're trying to do here is give you tips to make you dangerous. The other thing, talking about color of, of topwater bait, one of the best colors of topwater bait for a lot of guys is black. Topwater baits are guaranteed to be where? Running on top. top. Yeah. And when fish are looking up, what is the brightest thing in a fish's world? All light comes from where? The sky and the sun. Yeah, the surface. There's no light underwater. So all the light's coming from above. And so the lightest thing in their world is the surface. A darker color, much easier to see. So yeah, why would I even use like a green or the idea behind those i think is it's supposed to be like a bluegill color so that they they see the buzz and they hit that little thing hanging underneath it's like a bluegill following whatever that was but honestly when the fish are looking straight up at it like a, a jitter bug or uh, any any topwater bait especially that's that's not super fast moving black's a great color in clear and dirty water always yeah, it's always going to be more visible. So if fish are, are actively looking for food, uh, black will be the easiest one for them to find. Would you use that when we fished Okaboji last year and the water was crystal clear? If you were open water fishing that, would you still use a bright black? If the fish are, are active and want to feed, if they're looking for food and hitting stuff, yeah, absolutely. Just like you know, if you're running a jig and the fish are chasing and hammering, even when we're, when we're ice fishing, that bright chartreuse pulls them over from further away. They can see it from further and they'll come further to hit it. So it makes it easier to find. If they're negative and they're swimming up and looking at your chartreuse and not eating it, then you go to a gold or something because that's more likely to get bit. So you could go to something with a white belly if that black is too apparent. They just don't, they aren't just chasing them. But when they're active, black is definitely good. And at night, black is really good because it's easy to find. Fish tend to miss topwaters a lot. So the more obvious it is, the more likely you are to get hit instead of a miss. They used to make Zara spooks in clear plastic. And guys, they get blown up on a Zara spook in clear plastic because they're hitting the motion of it. If you're fishing really clear water and they can see that thing swimming, they'll hit it whether it's like literally see-through plastic. They can't even see it. They're just hitting the action of that thing. So the color's you know, color means more to us than it does to them, but black is definitely more visible and easier to chase down. Results in less misses. That makes sense. Now, while we're talking about color, let's talk color of the blades quick. And I'll tell you one thing that I heard from an old guy in Canada one time. Yeah. And I'll, I'll see if you agree or disagree with this statement. Pike fishing, and they were saying, let's pike fish 11 to 2 when the sun's at its highest point. And if it's a sunny day, use silver because it can it's going to create a lot a lot of flash but if it's a cloudy day use bronze i don't know that was just the rule that someone up there told me and i've been following that bronze on cloudy day silver on sunny days of course this makes sense making a lot of flash is that is there any truth to that both gold and silver make a lot of flash i've heard the same thing that you were talking about i would say that I tend to use probably more gold than silver uh, just because I have success with it that way. But I am, I'm conscious of the difference and I do switch if it's not working. On overcast days, a number of the musky guys that I fish with will run copper, which is not a common blade color. But for whatever reason, like a black and red skirt or a purple skirt with a copper blade can be like really something that guy that a couple of guys I know go to when it's when it's overcast, stormy, nasty out. Um, and it has a different level of flash than a brass or a gold blade does. The other thing is painted blades. When the water's off colored, Sometimes there isn't enough light to to activate the flash on those, but you just. <laughs> it's stuck in my sock. Sorry to interrupt. I got nice. when, uh, when the water is off colored, there isn't enough light to make those uh, shiny blades flash. That's when guys will go to a painted blade because the painted blades kind of glow into the water around it a little more so that you get it like a halo area of color as opposed to painted. 
like, like a if painted they were blade, like a chartreuse blade. painted blade or a, not on a buzz bait necessarily, but on a spinner bait. Yeah, if you have a, a orange painted blade or a yellow painted blade, they'll reflect light kind of in an area or aura around that in that dirty water. And, and for whatever reason, guys seem to like to do that. Some of the Wisconsin waters, like a black chartreuse, even parts of Lake of the Woods, a black chartreuse is a really popular, like the chartreuse painted blade and a black and chartreuse skirt is a really popular color. And fire tiger painted blade too is, you know, orange, green, yellow, as opposed to a sh straight shiny blade. I think that's C when I would, I'll have to rewatch the Valentine Refuge video, but I think I for sure used a painted painted blade after I started catching them on this bait. I started using Fire Tiger, which is a good color, I, I believe. And I caught just as many pike on this. I was catching pike on this black my buzz bait, which I call magic. That's my keyword. I didn't yeah. get that from anyone. I caught pike on this, and I, I caught pike on this red dog that was. Painted blade fire tiger skirt, I believe. That's a good color. We've caught a lot of fish on that fire tiger. A couple of pike lakes, even semi-local pike lakes, and uh, you caught a big, you caught a, a huge bass on that. Yeah, that that, I think it was twenty-two inch, a six pound even. Really nice bass on a rad dog. It was a two fish day. I got a six and a four. That's the only two fish I got. Take That's the sacrifice you make with those big, big baits. But I'll be honest with you, I'd do it again tomorrow. I don't mind missing some fish if I get into a big one like that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this dude and maybe put this one in my pocket and get ready to go fishing because tomorrow morning is supposed to be beautiful. I'm going to get up real early right at sunrise and start throwing magic to see if I can catch me a magic bass. Nice. Am I, am I going with you? Am I meeting you somewhere? Are we get, we getting out in the morning? Sure. All right. Let's go uh, catch some fish. As far as everyone else watching, thank you for watching. Absolutely. We've been, uh, we've been experiencing a little growth on the subs, and we really appreciate that. The yeah. interaction with the channel has been really nice, and things are going well. Uh, as evidenced by the, I don't know if you can hear the fireworks outside my house, but everybody's excited about it, and they're, they're celebrating by lighting off a bunch of fireworks. Yep. Are you going to film a quick hook extraction video? Pull that thing out of your foot. Get get some footage of that. I got it. Oh, dang it. Off camera. <laughs> I'm not going to rehook myself for you. Dang. Well, lefty will end up with a hook in him at some point. We'll get that filmed. Billy's Bait and Tackle. Highly recommend <laughs> buying this from billysbaitandtackle.com. Um, you can probably just get it from Andrew Flair's website. <laughs> Googansquad.com. Use Promo code small fish. Absolutely. We're going to buy some goats. Did I tell you I filmed feeding some goats? What's up, naughty boys? Woo! <laughs> Look at you guys. 